Hi guys. It has been a day. Uh, I'm not a person who feels anxious very often, but I was just feeling anxious today. Like that squeezy chest gripping feeling. I'm making a lot of big decisions, big life decisions, and uh, it's a little scary. But getting to sit down and film and then the editing, it's all very therapeutic for me. It makes me think about this and nothing else. It's kind of like meditation, but not because in meditation you're trying not to think about anything. But I want to sit down and have a conversation with you today about brushes. And I wanted to do that specifically because in our October BoxyCharm box, we received the Luxie collaboration with BoxyCharm Eye Blender Brush Pack. And I was very excited to get this because I am a newbie with makeup and I have not had good blending brushes before, so this was great to get. After receiving this, I had a chance to look a little bit more into the company and learn a little bit more about brushes because there was a lot that I didn't know. There is still a lot that I don't know, I'm sure, but I'm going to share with you what I learned. And then we will do a little bit of blending with the brushes that we received. So let's get started. The brain behind this company is Tammy Huynh, who spent eight years in the beauty industry, and it talks about how in the 90s uh, you couldn't really find synthetic brushes that were also high quality. Those two things just didn't go together. But Tammy had very sensitive skin and found that a lot of products broke her out, and as she spent time in the beauty industry, she really wanted to find products and create products that would be for people like her. So Luxie was founded in 2014, and their viewpoint is not just a pretty face, but a wholesome lifestyle. Their products are vegan, cruelty-free, hypoallergenic, and high quality. They are based in California, and they have a whole range of different products, uh, over 200 cosmetics products, and I specifically went in to look at information about their brushes. I had assumed when I first opened this up that I thought the pink and rose gold was something that was special to their BoxyCharm collaboration, but that's not true. They have uh, three different lines of brushes, although one looks like they only made one set and it's sold out, so they really have two different lines of brushes. They have one that's kind of a bluish, that one was sold out, but they have their Rose Gold and then they have their Onyx Noir. And I could be wrong, but you can sort the products on their website by prices. And I found that the Onyx Noir brushes all tended to be at a higher price point than the Rose Gold. So I think their Onyx brushes tend to be more of their pro products, while the Rose Gold ones are a little bit more entry level. And it looked like their Rose Gold brushes were about uh, $15 to $25. Their pro brushes were more $35 to $42. None of them were crazy prices. Um, they all seemed very reasonable. On the Luxie website, they also have eye products that are specifically eyebrow um, pomades. They also have lashes and they have a number of eyeshadows and eyeshadow palettes. Now here's something I don't quite understand and I would love if any of you understand this to explain it more fully to me because they also have a link to their sponges and their palettes. Their sponges are the uh, Beauty Blender line and their palettes are the official Z palette line or if you were in Canada, Z palette. Um, so I don't quite understand because each of those brands also has their own website and nowhere on those brands' websites, although I just looked very closely, do they link back to Luxie. So I'm trying to understand if Luxie is like the parent brand for Beauty Blender and for Z Palette uh, or if there's some kind of connection there where they're just a seller of them. It actually says to me that it seems like a higher quality association to be associated with Beauty Blender. But if you look at the story of who found a Beauty Blender, everything that goes with that, it's no crossover to the people who appear to work at Luxie. So I don't quite understand that, but you will find that if you go to their webpage. And it's a very good webpage. It's laid out well. You can sort the products by all different kinds of ways. Uh, I found that to be quite well organized. Uh, and it's one of those websites that made me feel better about the product because they had great information there. Uh, it was all very clean, well laid out, very professional. The very small amount that I know about brushes, because I do not own a good collection of brushes, um, but I can tell you what I know. There are three basic parts to a brush, and let's just take this one out of the pack. Uh, that is the bristles, the connecting part, which is called a ferrule, and then the uh, handle. 
So there are different things you need to know about these different parts of the brushes. And we're going to start with the handle because that is really the easiest. There's not anything that necessarily makes a handle better or worse than any other handles. It's really about the balance of it in your hand, the comfort of it, how it feels, that it's not too long or too short, that you can sort of get in there and do what you want to do. I know watching YouTube tutorials, a lot of people talk about if you have a longer brush, it means you can use a light hand because, oh, <laughs> some bronze are left over on there from when I was doing my makeup. Uh, you can sort of use a light touch by holding the brush at the very end and that helps a little bit. Um, but really, if you like the way a handle feels, there's nothing that really uh, differentiates quality in terms of the handle. Now when you go on to the ferrule, there are different materials that this are, these are made with, but really what you are looking for um, is one that is maybe not aluminum because aluminum is a, uh, a bit of a cheaper metal. It might start to rust or oxidize faster. Uh, but you want to see that it doesn't have a seam at any place on it, and this one does not. Um, if it has a seam, it's more likely that it's not sealed quite as well, which means that it's not going to have as good a grasp on the bristles. Um, I can't really tell so much with my brushes what the ferrule is made out of. I don't quite understand that much about that part of the brush, but that's as much as I know. So for the bristles, there are two general categories of the brushes that you can have, and that is synthetic and natural. I am pretty sure that all of my brushes, I mean, I got rid of some of the packages so long ago I can't tell anymore, are all synthetic. Synthetics are just that. They're made out of synthetic material, usually nylon, something like that, uh, and they are manufactured, um, and they tend to be better for liquid or cream products they don't pick up, like they don't soak up a lot of the product, which means uh, you're not going to be wasting product um, the way you might if you were trying to use a natural bristle brush with a cream or liquid product. Natural bristle brushes, on the other hand, uh, are made from animal sources. So you have a wide range of things that can be made from sable, squirrel, badger, um, they say camel is actually made from like pony hair. Um, what are some other ones? There are other ones too. Goat. Uh, and there's all kinds of knowledge in this area that I don't know because, you know, sable is better than goat for certain things. Uh, and then it's a certain kind of sable and it's fur from a certain part of its body and it's male versus female. You get really into these things if you're going for um, really quality brushes. Uh, but the idea with natural bristles is that there is, much like your hair, there's like a cuticle, there's a naturalness to it. It will soak up, but it also means that it picks up more product. It's better at blending because there's just more irregularities in the bristles that almost give it not a rougher texture because you feel it is being smooth, but on a micro level, there's more uh, moving the product around, more blending, more... Uh, places for it to pick up products. So really you want natural bristle brushes for any powder products. And natural br bristle brushes are going to do the best for blending. They will do it better and faster. Uh, that's what they're really good for. From what I understand, and I don't know a lot about this, there are ways, I mean, natural bristle brushes cannot be vegan, but they can be cruelty free. What I also understand is that companies like makeup companies don't run factories making their own brushes. So uh, it is likely that brushes from a few different brands are made at the same factory. They will work to the specifications of the company who is ordering them, but just because a brand is more expensive doesn't mean it's necessarily better uh, because it may be made at the same factory with the same materials as a less expensive brand. So what you really want to do is when you're buying a brush, get a chance to test it. See what it feels like. Uh, pull on the hairs a little bit to see um, if any of the hairs start to come out. You want those to be really set in there. Uh, brush it and see what it does. Just get a chance to like feel it and play with it and see if it feels right to you. I have also heard, and I have not gone to test this yet, although I think it would be fun to do, that some artist brushes uh, are made from sable and things like that, and it's possible that you could get cheaper brushes made from higher quality material at an art store. 
I have not tested that. So these brushes, uh, two of them I was using today to blend for this look so you can see that they're a little darker on top. Uh, they do not have the um, a seam anywhere along here. Uh, no bristles have come out. They feel very soft. They seem to blend very well. Um, they seem to be good quality. And I thought it would be fun just to end this video with a little bit of blending sampling. So I'm going to be using these Luxie blending brushes. And I brought two palettes over to play with. One is the Smashbox Full Exposure, sort of mini palette. And the other is the much loved um, by other people, I don't find this does a lot for me, but it was cheap and I wanted to try it, is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Comfort Zone Palette. Uh, and you often see people talking about this as being one of their favorite drugstore palettes. So I have on here three colors, and I should have thought about where this was <laughs> before I put it on my hand in that way. Uh, this is a very light, creamy color, uh, green, and this is the color that most people love in that palette. It's this sort of brown-blue duochrome. Now when you hear people talk about blending, there are two ways that they talk about, and wow, this is going to be hard to do not being able to see it. Sometimes people talk about working in a windshield wiper fashion, so imagine if this is your eye uh, with the darkest color, a dark color on top for some reason, is that you would blend back and forth like this. What I do find with blending is that sometimes it seems like it takes off quite a bit of the color, but you can see we sort of blended away between the green and the uh, beige there. And the other way that people talk about is more of a circular to blend between two colors, so doing small circles. And then finally we would want to blend away the line between the dark color here and our natural skin tone. I'm going to do that with the windshield wiper motion again. So there you have three slightly better blended colors using one of the Luxie blending brushes. So I've gone into my Smashbox and done a very dark brown, a cream matte, and then that same dark brown again. This is super pigmented. That dark brown was just one swipe with my finger in the palette. And let me see if I can get this blended to a nice smooth brown to cream to brown to skin. So the Smashbox didn't do quite as well. In trying to blend it, you'll see that I got like the color of this compared to when I first put it on is so much fainter and I saw a lot of powder kicking off when I was trying to blend it. Um, so this one loses quite a bit of the pigment and this is sometimes when you go, okay, put a little bit more of the pigment on the brush so when you blend, you're blending a little bit more color on there as well. and that darkens it up a little bit again. So I loved getting these brushes. Uh, looking at the things that I got in my BoxyCharm box, I've reviewed the Briogeo, I've reviewed the small palette, I've reviewed these brushes, as well as the liquid matte lipstick, and what was the other thing? The bronzer. Um, so I've actually reviewed all of the products from my BoxyCharm, and it was a good month. I really liked the Briogeo. I like that bronzer so much better than I thought I would. Wasn't really big on the liquid lipstick, I gotta say. The brushes are amazing, and that little palette is okay. I mean, I don't find there's enough colors in it for me to just use that, but the gold in it is really pretty cool, and uh, it has a nice cream shadow for me. It works as a base, and the brown is pretty nice and pigmented in there as well. Uh, so... If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for joining me if this is your first time here. If you would like to subscribe to watch more of my videos, click on my little face down here. And if you would like to watch some more of my videos, one of them should be coming up right about here so that you can click on that and watch some of my other product reviews. I have a whole um, playlist for my reviews, so I will put that down below. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye.